The attacks are more and more intense, with Russian forces now using heavy weapons in civilian areas. In the second city of Kharkiv, a university building crumbles after a missile strike. It's clearly not a military target. This place is home to one and a half million people. For those remaining, nowhere is safe, even the bomb shelters. I have kids at the age of 8, 10, 11, 12 and 13. They're, all of them are afraid they will destroy Kharkiv for sure. They have no limits, they have no moral, they have no one human feeling. They bomb uh, the district where, where, where I live, including school, the school when my, my kids studying. And of course, they see these pictures and they're shocked. On the south coast, on the Sea of Azov, the situation is also increasingly difficult. Many of the coastal towns are cut off, including Mariupol, a vital target if Russia is to create a land bridge to Crimea. Many of the city's residential areas have been shelled, with fears hundreds of civilians may have been killed. Vladimir Putin's forces appear to be frustrated. The Kremlin claims that 498 of its troops have been killed in the first admission of casualties in this conflict. But the true number is thought to be much higher. <laughs> Moscow's supremacy in the sky is obvious. These jets ripping over the town of Irpin before unleashing their bombs. On the ground, extensive destruction. These residential buildings in pieces. In the capital, Kiev, not far away, the advance has slowed. But the violence has not. Emergency services video shows the aftermath of a missile strike on the capital's landmark radio and TV tower. One of the five victims, a journalist, has been named as Yevheni Sakun. The blast spread over a huge area, damaging the Holocaust Memorial. But people across Ukraine are showing remarkable courage. The mayor of a town in the east rallies his citizens. And the resistance is getting stronger, with more and more volunteers joining local forces. The weapons they have, though, are no match for Russian firepower. Here in Dnipro, in the eastern part of the country, people are watching the growing levels of violence with great fear that are being used against the civilian population in other cities. Now, in this place, they are fortifying their defences. But as another day ends, residents worry that it's only a matter of time before they too come under attack. The sirens are sounding more often. It means a heart-pounding trip to the air raid shelter and a nervous wait for the danger to pass. No one knows how this war will end, but as days turn into weeks, there's a feeling that this may become even more savage. There may not be any respite from Russian aggression, but Ukraine says it will continue to resist, even in the face of great adversity. Alex Rossi, Sky News, Eastern Ukraine.